In this video, I get creative with lens flare in my small home studio. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. Now, one of the very first rules that I learned inside of a studio was never point your lights back at the camera. And it's generally a really good bit of advice because if you do, you're likely to get some reduced contrast and lens flare amongst other problems. However, the thing about rules, once you've learned to rule, you can break that rule. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video by deliberately pointing lights at the camera to get some creative effects. So let's clear this down, get a model in and get shooting. Today, I've been joined in the studio by Beth, who's gonna be the model for this shoot. Now, before we get to the lens flare part of things, let's start with the basic lighting. I'm gonna use a modification of the classic beauty lighting. That means I've got a single light flying high over Beth here. This is the Adorama Explore 600, and it's on a remote head with a small glow softbox. Now, this is metered for F8, and if I take a picture like this, well, it's gonna give, give us some interesting lighting. Let's, let's have a look. Here we go. As you can see, that looks quite contrasty. Now, normally for beauty lighting, we'd add a reflector below, but bearing in mind, we're gonna add some lens flare that's really gonna reduce the contrast of this shot. That's absolutely fine. So for the background, I'm gonna put a second light in right behind Beth, and it is gonna go right in as close as I can tuck it in behind her, and that's gonna point at the background and light this gray. Let's have a look. Here we go, Beth. And that gives the background a lovely natural vignetted look. So whilst that gray is really nice, we can actually put a colored gel on that background light and create a whole new color that matches Beth's dress. So I've got sort of blue and red here. I think red's gonna be the color to go for. So let's go with red. We'll just pop that on the, uh, the background like that. And let's take the same shot, but with a red gel on that background light. As you can see, the, the pinky red color really goes well. It gives a very colorful shot. I really like that, that's great. So for the flare, I'm gonna use some lights, some speed lights, and I'm actually gonna get these to fire back at the camera. So I'm gonna angle these down. Now I've got these on little boom arms. You don't have to use boom arms, but when it comes to the Photoshop bit that we'll get to later on, having boom arms is just a little bit easier to remove than a whole light stand. So I'm gonna fire these back. Now before I do, the position of these lights is gonna make a big difference. At the moment, they're quite a way back behind the light that's lighting our background. And although that might work fine, there is a potential problem with that. Let's have a look. Here we go, Beth. And sure enough, you can see that those background lights are casting a shadow on the background itself and rather ruining it and making the Photoshop bit extra hard. So the solution is to bring the lights forward. So they're not gonna be hitting the background light, not gonna be casting a shadow onto my background. And that actually works really well. I actually quite like the lights fairly close to the model. Bearing in mind, we're working in a small studio environment. These are the sorts of things you have to make compromises on, but I think this is a compromise I'm okay with. Let's just take a shot like that, see how that looks, make sure they're out the way. And as you can see, although the lights aren't turned on, they are still within the area of my shot. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So I've switched the lights on. They are on their wide zoom, 24 millimeter zoom, and they're on their lowest power. Now let's take a shot like that and see how it looks because although we could meter the key light, we can't really meter these background lights that are pointing straight at the camera. It's just too random. It's better to do it by trial and error. So lowest possible power and the light's fired, but it's not particularly bright. I mean, it's okay, but we can do better than that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the power of the lights by a stop and then test it and a stop and test it. And when you reach that point, you start to get lots of lens flare, but there's still detail in Beth. We can see that the, the shadows are there, but they're very much more washed out. That's the sort of look you're going for. You can take it further or you can pull it back. That's one of the great things about this technique. So everything's set up. All we need to do now is take some pictures. So Beth, are you ready? Yeah. Let's take some shots. Here we go.
you don't have a grey background and some coloured gels, how can you make this effect work for you? Well, if you've still got the, the lights, and you could just use one, you don't have to use two of course, you could get rid of the background light, don't need that. Let's bring Beth back in again. I'll switch the background light off so it doesn't fire at the camera. And I've changed to just a black pop-up background. Now these black and white reversible pop-up backgrounds are extremely versatile. It's well worth getting one for any small home studio. Now in theory, this should be basically the same. The key light is the same. The background flare lights are the same. Let's take a shot, see how it looks. And it looks basically the same. You get that nice kind of flare going on there. The white light is fine, nothing wrong with that at all. But if you have access to little gels, and these are just little sort of Roscoe gels for speed lights, these are great because you can pop that on your speed light and you can change the color of the light. Now I'm just using a bit of blue tack to attach those on. Let's just take a shot like that, see how they look. There we go. And that looks really good. We've got some lovely bright lights there. But there's one more thing we can add in to this to make it more exciting. And that's a puff of smoke. So I've got my smoke machine all set up here. It's all warmed up, ready to go. We don't really need much smoke for a small studio. So I'm just going to give this a very small puff of smoke. And then we're going to take some pictures. So Beth, are you ready? Yeah. OK, let's give this a blast of smoke. Here we go. Need to give that just a moment for that to circulate. And what that's going to do is as the flash fires and it fires through the smoke, those lights are going to become much bigger. That's the theory. Let's take some pictures. The combination of good light and great makeup often means that you don't have to do too much work in post-processing. And that's certainly the case with the black background and the smoky background shots. But with the light background, there was a bit more work to do because, well, I could see the light stands coming in at the edges. Now that means I'm going to need to do some cloning or healing. And as always in Photoshop, there's so many ways you can do the same thing, but some will work better than others. Let's have a look. So this is the shot I want to work on. And if I just sort of zoom in a little bit over the bit that's troubling me, it's, it's kind of this thing right here. And you can see why it's, it's um, well, it's part of my lighting setup. Now, fortunately, using boom arms to the side means it's actually relatively small in size. If I was using a light stand, it would be much larger and a little bit more work. Now to remove it, I'll try first of all the good old clone stamp tool. Now this is a, uh, a great tool. All you need to do is just sort of sample from somewhere, sort of up here, for example, and just sort of paint and hope that it kind of matches. But it's actually quite a difficult tool to match when there's a gradient going on. And we have a gradient from lighter to darker. It, it tends not to work so well. So in this case, that's not going to be the tool I'm going to use. I'm going to jump over and try my favorite, the, the spot healing tool. OK, so let's come in here and we'll do a little bit of spot healing. Now this is a great tool, there's no need to sample, you just paint and cross your fingers and hope that it works. And in this case it actually works quite well, but sometimes it can be better than others. So there's one other way to try this tool and that's on proximity match. Proximity match is a different sort of mathematics if you like, and when you use it often the first time, nothing happens. Don't worry, go over it a second time and that's when the magic actually happens. And it actually gives, in this case, a cleaner fill, I think. So that's what I'm going to use. OK, so it should work first time from now on. Yes, it does. There we go. And I think there's one more little bit I want to do. And that's just this bit here. I've got some flare. I've got these little flares here that on her shoulders, but that was part of the technique. I want to keep them in the shot. But this bit, not so sure about that. That was a bit of flare on the edge that really wasn't adding to my image. And there we are. In just a few moments, I've cleaned up all the unwanted parts to give me a lovely final photo. It's so often the case that breaking the rules of photography would increase your creativity. And this is one of those really simple techniques that works wonders even in a small home studio like mine. 
So if you want to see more creative effects from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.